Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek, and today I'm going to be answering a question posed by one of you guys in the comments. In a recent video where I demonstrated how to replace the SIM card reader on an iPhone 13 Pro Max, when it comes to replacing it with a dual SIM card reader, Alpha Micro Soldering commented, awesome video as always. One question, do you need to change anything on the motherboard? Like adding some new resistors or jumper wires to make the phone accept two SIMs? And the answer is yes. So today I'm gonna to show you what that's all about. After taking out the Penelope screws and lifting the display, we'll need to remove the battery so that we can access the 5G antenna. Remove it along with the motherboard. We'll disconnect the battery. This battery has been removed previously. Along with this motherboard, we'll disconnect the display, the proximity sensor, pop out the SIM tray, and disconnect all of the connectors. We'll take out the motherboard, and let me show you real quick how to replace the SIM tray with from a single SIM to a dual SIM tray. All right, so let's start off this repair in a very simple way. We've got the SIM tray here. I'm gonna salvage a couple things, like for example, the sticker, and then one on the side here. And I'm gonna flood also the area here to remove all of these little foam connector pieces. Otherwise, when we go to heat up this SIM tray, these will just shrivel and potentially make my job harder. And we'll flip over the motherboard so we can access the back. And I'm gonna to try to get under all of the layers so that I can peel the sticker up in one go, just like that. Now you can see any way that there's solder on the back here that's coming through, any of these dots, those correspond to the SIM tray. We're gonna to wanna to lower the melting point of the solder that's here from the, from the factory to help remove it. I'm gonna add a bunch of flux on all of the little joints and I'm going to come in with some solder paste. This is a 138 so it's a low melt. Turn on the iron and I'm going to start to mix the solder here with the factory solder. And we'll just keep doing this until we've really flooded each one of those holes with the solder. A lot of the time when doing this it'll actually bring the, the higher melting solder to the to the surface and it'll end up more on the iron. Now I'm going to come in with some wick and we're going to try to wick up as much of the solder as we can through each one of those holes and then cleaning it out as best we can leaving behind basically the pin that goes through the hole. And I'm going to do this all the way around focusing on the, the holes that maybe aren't letting go of the, the solder as easily as the other ones. Now I'm going to go back in with them low melt again and we're going to refill the holes before we desolder the, the sim tray. And it may not be necessary to wick them out if you're just going to be refilling it with a low melt. Maybe that's enough to bring the temperature down, but it's what's worked for me. All right, take some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, and we're just going to clean up any of the remaining flux paste. Now we've got a, a clean back of the board here. All right, what I've done is I've wrapped up the board nice and tight with some captain tape all the way around kind of leaving exposed anything that I need to solder from the back. But this will also help keep the board from potentially splitting when I heat it up. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my hot air. I've got mine set at 375. And I'm just gonna warm up the whole area. And I'm just gonna put the tweezers under the edge of the tray. giving it a little bit of tension upwards, and then the SIM tray will eventually let it go and come off like that. We'll let the board cool down a little bit. All right, so now I'm gonna add some flux, just like that. We'll grab our iron and our wick, and we'll wick up all of the solder. And we'll do this until all of the holes are clean of all of the solder, so that we can much easier install the new SIM tray reader. There's a couple holes that aren't letting me clear them. Most of them are nice and clear. You can see they're all nice and black there, but I'm gonna flip over the board. This will really expose the holes that I still need to, to wick out. You can see these ones on the side here, they're good. These six are good. Five of the six are good there. We're almost through on the other ones. So we'll add some flux, take out our wick. If you're ever really struggling to get solder out of a hole, you can always take a little bit extra 
of the low melt solder paste and add it to the hole and then we'll wake it up really getting all right now that i have all of the holes cleaned out i'm gonna go ahead and thoroughly clean the motherboard with some isopropyl alcohol q-tip whatever you got we'll flip it over and clean the inside as well making sure that we get rid of all of the flux all right now it's time now that we've cleaned that to get out our new dual sim tray reader now it'll look very similar to this one if you can look here even though the plastic is melted on this one the bottom section that was touching the board is just those empty rectangles on the new one it's got the two layers so it's got that second row up top. See, this one just has the top row, and this one has two rows, one on the bottom. All right, so we're gonna do a couple things to prep for this new SIM tray. The grounding positions here around the perimeter, I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to them. That way I'm not having to really tin the, the board at all. And I'm gonna come in on each one of these little pads and we'll tin them up with solder. One more, this teeny one on the end here. Now I'm gonna encapsulate everything else in flux. So we've got all of the pins and I'm just gonna cover in flux and we'll add more flux to all of the grounding positions as well. But I'm not overdoing the flux, if that makes sense. All right, so here's how I'm gonna go about doing the next step. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a flat chisel blade and I'm gonna compress some solder down into, some solder paste I should say, down into the holes and then I'm gonna wipe away the excess and I'm gonna flip it over and do the exact same thing. You can almost see the solder paste already coming through on the other side. I shouldn't say almost, you can see the solder paste coming through on the other side. All right, and then I'm gonna wipe away the excess just like that. And I'm gonna take the new SIM tray and I'm gonna line it up and compress it into those slots and I'm gonna take some flux and I'm actually going to cover the outside edge of the plastic here. Flux I found actually acts as somewhat, somewhat of a shield for plastics, which is odd, but kind of cool at the same time. Because I'm gonna heat this from below. I'm gonna turn on my hot air, and very similar to how I would do kind of an HDMI swap or something, I'm gonna come in from below, and I'm gonna heat up the board just like that. I'm gonna let it cool down. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just make sure all of the holes have flown real nice with the solder. And I'm gonna come in and reinforce all of the joints with a uh, high melt. All right, now that we've got that all on there, let's clean it on up for the last time. Looks like I singed the plastic a little bit right here, but I'm just gonna clean it up, make it look a little bit more presentable. I won't tell anyone if you don't. And we'll give this another final cleaning before we put the sticker on the back. If that's good enough for now. And then come into the front. We'll clean whatever we can see. You can see nice solid solder joints through and through on, on all of those. We'll peel back the captain tape. I'm going to come in with a microfiber cloth and some isopropyl alcohol. Get rid of any residue. And we'll clean up the back, making it perfect for the sticker to go back on. And now you can see we've got the double sided SIM read, the dual SIM card reader installed. Now that you've seen how to replace the SIM tray, we're going to go ahead and make the modifications we need to to the motherboard. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the sticker here on the back. Along the inside here there's some black stickers I'm going to need to remove. Otherwise they might just hold onto the top board a little bit more than I'd like them to. I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol and and pour it onto the little stickers so that we can salvage these and return them to the phone later. My end goal is always to make it look like I've never been in the phone. And we'll pop this one off. And don't forget the small one at the top or the one around the battery connector. All right, next I'm gonna get out a hot plate and I'm gonna select the iPhone 13 series plate. We'll set that on there. We'll go ahead and switch this on. We'll line up the motherboard. We'll stick it on down and I'm going to put some pressure on the SIM tray to help hold it down. Now another tool that I recommend you get if you don't have one already is this motherboard assistant pen. Basically what it is, this will help for, there's one for the basically a the Android and the one for the iPhone. The end of this acts kind of like a screw so you can actually install it on top of the motherboard just by twisting it 
like so. We'll just wait for this to heat up so that we can separate the two layers. Once it's up to temperature, I'm gonna look for a little bit of movement in the top board. That way I know I can split it away from the top. Sometimes the assistance of a little bit of hot air can help, but I prefer doing it without it. I like the heat to be more uniform than that. And if I can get a straight pull, if I can pull it straight up and not have it shift around, I can avoid having to re-ball the mid, mid layers. Just a technique that I like to do. All right. As soon as we're at temperature, I'm going to look for some movement on the corner. Now we've got some splitting of the board happening there. So we'll lift it up and turn off the machine. All right, now let's go under the microscope so that I can show what modifications need to happen to this IC, a couple components here and down here. All right, so let me try to quickly explain what I need to do. All right, so here I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now the board view software, this is JCI Drawing. Right here you see I've got the UE SIM IC. We're going to be removing this IC. This resistor, I'm going to be knocking it off. This resistor, I need to replace it with a 4.7K resistor. I'm going to run a jumper across this resistor from pin to pin, this resistor from pin to pin, this resistor from pin to pin as well. And down here as well, this resistor, R17, R, R1207, I'm going to be running a jumper here as well. When I'm done with this, there's going to be specific pin uh, readings that we're going to be testing for to make sure that we've done this properly. But for the meantime, let me go ahead and do that. So again, I'm going to be removing the ECMIC. We're removing this resistor, replacing this resistor, and jumping this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna start by kind of just getting rid of some of the underfill that's surrounding the IC. I don't want to affect any of the surrounding components, so I'm just gonna warm up and dig through the underfill. Same goes for the other side. I'm just gonna gently remove any of the underfill so that I can avoid disturbing like this capacitor here on the end. All right, while well, the board is nice and warm, we'll go ahead and take our temperature up. 400 off it comes and now I'm going to remove the little resistor just like that now one thing I also need to do while I'm here is remove any of the thermal paste as it will definitely get in the way of reinstalling the motherboard with the technique I like I'm just going to try to clear as much of it manually all right so I'm going to go ahead and add some flux down that area take our iron all right Kind of cleaned up that area a little bit. I'm coming with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. And we'll just clean up the area so I can really see what I'm about to do. All right, let me grab some jumpers here. I just basically cut off the tip of the wick and it drops a bunch of micro jumpers that I can use. Just need to place them. All right, there's two and there's three. Now the hard part comes for the actual soldering. A jumper like this so it doesn't get sucked up onto the iron tip. So I'll just carefully take the iron tip with a good pair of tweezers and I'll run the jumper across them one at a time. All right, let me clean that up so it's a little easier to see. Now we've got three jumpers there. I still need to install the resistor right here, which I'll need to salvage from another device. But in the meantime, let's zoom on over here. Down here, you can see this gap right there. I can install that resistor as well, or I can install that jumper wire, I mean. Let's see if this wire will work or if it's too long. All right, I'm pretty satisfied with that. I just want to make sure I reinforce that jumper a little bit with some extra solder. There we go. I'm just going to clean up the flux, make sure that jumper isn't touching anything that it's not supposed to. If you notice, I ran it basically from that pin to this one and then over to that little component because looking at the schematic, this side of things, all three of these are in line. So having this jump over and then attach to here is the same as leaving it without it. So this is totally fine. Now I need to find a resistor. I'm looking for a 4.7. I have in front of me a motherboard. So if I type in over here 4.7 because I have a iPhone 7 motherboard that's just on my desk for parts. You can see this component is a 4.7. So if I click on this guy, here it is, 4803. All right. 
and 4804 is also a 4.7k resistor so these two right here that is located on the back of the board on the corner of these two UICs here this U4806 and 4805 so I'm just salvage one of these resistors and zoom down in on it okay right there so you can see here are the two ICs and those are the two resistors we'll get out our hot air out comes the resistor as I knock everything else around and we need to install that resistor right there so I'm going to get out a little bit of flux we'll come in with our hair real quick we'll warm up the area and we'll put it in place there it's not fully attached I'm going to go in with an iron in a second all right we'll take in the iron well add a, a bit of flux that was a bit much all right that one's on there now all right so the values that I'm going to be looking for we've got ground here this line we're going to be expecting it to read 0.6 something, 0 0.60, 0 0.62. This is uh, no stuff, it's blue, so it'll say OL. This one we're going to be looking for 0 0.37738, 37, and this one 0 0.33, 34, somewhere around there, and this one 0.34 as well. So let's go and test, mainly it's these four lines making sure this is still ground, this is still OL, and let's check these four lines and see if we get those values. All right, so got the multimeter set in diode mode. All right, so this is a grounder right here. We're gonna go to the top one, it should be ground. Yep, the next one we should be getting 0.602 or 0 0.6, yep, 0 0.62, that's close enough. The next one's OL, and we should be getting 0.37, at 0.39. See, mine reads about 0.2 higher than than the average, so th this is exactly what I'm expecting. And then 0.33, yep, 0.35. That, that's 0.02 higher. And 0.33 uh, three as well, so that's 0.2 higher. Perfect. So I've got the readings that I need to on the back there. That means that my jumpers have worked. So now we'll take our board heater. We will put back the board like so. I'm going to take some flux and gently go around the perimeter and put a nice thin coating of flux like so. I'm going to go around real quick and just dab the flux, make sure we spread it around evenly, basically painting it on with the edge of this brush. I'll go ahead and turn it on, take our top motherboard. And before I go any further, while we wait for that to heat up a little bit, i got to remove the bulk of the thermal paste from this side. Most of it stayed on the bottom board. Here we go. That way I have nothing that makes this one a kind of teeter-totter. And we'll line up the board, making sure it's perfectly centered, and we'll let that heat up. And uh, what's nice is when this gets up to temperature, you'll actually be able to see, if you look very carefully, it, it settled down onto the bottom board. And because I haven't reballed it, if I ever tap on it to push down, it's not actually going to cause any harm because I have the spacer still intact. So I can put a little bit of downward pressure. I mean, not a whole lot. I'm literally just going to let the weight of the tweezers like teeter off my finger, not even pushing down, I'm just letting them relax there. And it'll beep again when it gets up to temperature. I'm going to leave it for about 30 seconds, then we'll turn it off. There's my beep. That means I'm at temperature. And we'll leave it for 30 seconds and we'll let it cool down. And those are the steps with regards to the motherboard. What you need to do on the iPhone 13 Pro Max so that the new dual SIM card reader will accept two SIMs. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know as well. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.